Welcome everybody, it is me, Cyber Warrior, and this is Cyber Warrior Studios. And it's another Tech Tuesday, so I know it's been a minute, but just trying to get some things put together. Uh, not everything worked out the exact way I planned, so I had to alter my plan for this episode, but that's okay. It's okay. We're still going to get some things done. So, today we are going to go over another offensive security distribution, and it's kind of my review of it, uh, to be honest. Uh... I've not played much with Arch Linux. I'm more of a Debian user. But uh, I decided when this new version of Black Arch came out, I was going to give it a shot and take a look at it. At least see what it has to offer. And to be honest, I'm not too thrilled. So for everybody out there that loves Arch Linux and this is their jam, all right, go for it. More power to you. Um, but from what I've seen, a lot of people talk about bloatware and things like that on Kali, Paratech, you name it. Um, by all means, I've used Kali, I've used Paratech, and yeah, there's a lot of applications that not everybody uses. Um, that's a given. Uh, I won't take that away. Um, but there's a lot of tools that I've played with, and that goes from anything from uh, digital forensics and uh, anti-forensics to you know pen testing and blue team tools. So I have used a lot on those. Um, I've even used some tools on Windows Commando and Windows Flare. Uh, so it's really up to you how you use each individual distribution. Now, saying that, once again, uh, other people like to talk about how, oh, well, you have to, um, you can just custom make a distribution, you know, get Ubuntu or base Debian or base Arch and put on it what you want. And for some people, that's great too. Go for it. I'm not stopping you, all right? I said the same thing back when I reviewed Windows Commando. Um, you know, if that's what you want to do, if you have the time to do that and can roll your own distro or, you know, make your own uh, setup that you're going to use on a regular basis or turn into an ISO and you have the time for that, go ahead, all right? Um, heck, if you do it and want me to review it, I'll take a look at it. I don't care. Um, I'd love to see something that's more minor. Now, if you can give me something that has a non-mode like Paratsec, uh, with just minimal offensive tools, kind of what maybe every pen tester would use or, you know, something along those lines, then hey, even better, all right? Uh, but for now, this is what we're going to do is we're going to go over Black Arch, okay? So, first things first, how do you get Black Arch? Go to blackarch.org, okay? So, Black Arch, how do I put this? Uh is a very very large distribution so when you're at blackarch.org you can go to many of the different links so like if you go to the tools link it even tells you right there there's over 2600 tools installed on this 2600 now don't get me wrong um a lot of uh a lot of them are small it isn't like they're huge because a lot of them are scripts and things of that nature but still, 2,600 different tools. Now, you may want to go through there. Total tool count, 2,620. If you want to go through there, take a look and decide, hey, you really like every tool in here or the majority of them or you've used them or want to play with them, go for it. But that's how you can see every tool that's installed on here. Because what I'm going to show you makes it really difficult to figure out what everything is and where it's all at. But saying that, we go to the downloads. Now, there's two, three options to install Black Arch that they give you. So there's downloading the ISO and then installing it, you know, to a bare metal or, you know, using the ISO to install into VMware or VBox or whatever you're going to use. Um, mind you, I tried that and had a lot of issues installing the VMware. I could have been doing something wrong. I won't put it past myself but I've never had an issue installing a Linux distribution into a virtual machine until now. All right, this is the first one I've ever had an issue where it just did not install properly. So um, what I ended up doing, especially for this video, was I got the OVA. So I got the virtual machine image, and that's what I'm gonna use to show you um, Black Arch and kind of how it works. Following that, they do have the steps in here to install on top of Arch Linux. So if you're already if you're already an Arch Linux user and want to install everything that Black Arch has to offer, then go ahead. You can go through, follow the steps, and install um, Black Arch that way. So, moving on, let's pull up Black Arch. 
and we are going to go to full screen so you guys can see this. All right. So already, don't get me wrong. I love the background. I love, you know, um, the way they designed it. And actually, let me log off here so that you guys can kind of see. Um, and, and we'll actually restart it. So they have different terminal colors. We're just going to do shutdown dash R now. We're going to reboot it real quick. And you'll be able to see how it, um, uh, that you can use different uh, desktop environments. So you do have options for different DEs, um, which is pretty cool. I mean, you can do that with other distributions as well. Um, baked into the OVA, there's already quite a few there. So it's very likely that other desktop environments may give me a different experience um, as far as how to access programs and the desktop and things of that nature. But the default of Fluxbox, which is what um, is on here, is what I log in with. And like I said, not extremely happy. But yeah, so you can go in here and you can see down here, you can do Fluxbox, Spectrum, or Spectre, WM, i3, Awesome, and Openbox. We're just gonna use Fluxbox, that was there. To log in, the user is root, and the password is just black arch, all lowercase. Um, now, the first thing I saw, like I said, I'm used to Debian distributions. I'm used to Kali, I'm used to Paratsec, I'm used to Ubuntu, and, and just a variety of different Debian distributions. It's just what I've been using for quite a few years now, um, or different flavors of it. And the desktop environment that comes standard with those always has a regular desktop, right? So there's menus, there's ways you can go around and look to just see what applications are there. On Black Arch, it's not so much, all right? So there's nothing to click to give you uh, like a GUI display, or at least not that I've found, of the applications. You can left click all day and you're not going to get anything. So to pull up the applications, you have to right click. And then this is where you get your black arch menu. So you have your terminals, which of course are different colors. And all your different colors are, is just the way the font is. So I am a gray terminal. Um, you know, I can make this bigger. Uh, let's see if this will work. Nope. Nope, that doesn't like to work either. So let's go down here. Uh, I want, uh, do, 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 nope, 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 um, all right, so well, let me make the font bigger, that's okay, so that's gray font, then you can, and you can set transparency and things like that, there's a lot of things that you can play around with, and go to red, and then you have red font, so on and so forth. And of course, like all, um, you know, Linux distributions, you can go in here and you can actually go to, um, you can type in like which Python and it'll tell you, you know, where Python is, uh, Python version, default Python version installed is 3.8.6. Um, and you can even go into, uh, LS, uh, user bin. And of course, that'll list out all your applications. So again, those are like the terminal ways you could do it. But what about, like I was talking about the graphical way? Well, of course you have right click. So you have your Fluxbox menu, which will allow you to do Fluxbox command, different tools, different workspaces. You can do user styles, system styles, which will allow you to change, you know, how this looks. You can configure your uh, desktop, everything like that. Then you have your different terminals and you have browsers, right? So Firefox and Chromium are what are on here by default. So we can go into Chromium, like everything, it'll load up and once it loads, then you'll have Chromium and you can have Firefox also. And if they wanna load today. All right, so while those load, um, you have your network, so you can do Wi-Fi Radar or Wi-Fi Radar Pull Kit, or Pull Kit, however you wanna pronounce it. And like I said, here's Firefox and you, you know, the browsers aren't bad, you know, Chromium and Firefox, that's usually the default on a lot of Linux these days. But then this is where it gets fun. Your black arch menu of all the tools. Now, some of this gets redundant. All right. So 
Uh, of course, you have anti friends except here. So they give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tools. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight tools here. Then you have your automation. And there's a lot here, right? I got to be honest, I haven't probably heard of over half of these. All right. So this is all new. Now, you got a lot of stuff for LDAP. You know, I know LDAP. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much here that I've never seen. And I'm not saying they're not good tools. They're just in all of the classes, all the courses, all the trainings I've done. I have never seen nor used any of these tools. You have automobile um, tools, which is good to have. Different back doors. So like this has Evil WinRM on it. Kali Linux does not have it installed by default. You have to go out and grab it. So that's a good thing to have. Um, Demi guys. Different back doors, different, you know, again, a bunch of different scripts um so again it's cool but here's where my problem comes in so now i have all these i i can't get back to a menu right there's no back button and again i may be seeing things wrong um i'm not a huge black arch user so if you have shortcuts if you have ways to do things that i'm not aware of please put it in the comments below um this is just my opinion and my review on what i've seen and again there's a lot of good tools on here just like a lot of other distributions, there are tools that you're going to use. This just seems very, very overloaded with tools that and scripts that oh, many people just aren't going to use. Um, so if you want to talk about bloated, this is more so than Kali or Parasec or any other distribution I've seen. Um, not to say the tools are bad, once again, but just an overabundance of things that many people probably aren't going to use. Disassemblers are always good. I mean, I like the fact that it has NFC here, but if you have nothing that works with NFC on your desktop or your laptop, then it's pointless, right? Um, networking, and there's all the networking tools. And I can't get out of it, right? So I accidentally clicked something, Chameleon. Um, wireless, all the wireless tools. Um, and if you right click, it'll, you can right click and that'll get you to the menus you were at. Uh, defensive tools, spoof, social. So all this stuff. And again, if you want to play with it and review the tools, go for it. Now, the one thing I will say, the one thing that Arch is, is it does not use Debian. Like it, it, it has its own installer and package manager. So if you are used to things like Kali or Paratsec that are based on Debian, then you're used to apt or apt or aptitude or dpackage for arch you use pacman and there's different options and switches to install things with that as well so um if you wanted to install I'm trying to think of something that would be worthwhile um since it has over 2000 tolls it makes it kind of difficult but um if there was some script or tool that wasn't there that you wanted you would do pacman dash sy and then whatever the tool name is or even dash s would probably work um with whatever the tool name is so be aware that there's a lot here i i encourage you to play with it yourselves make up your own mind um if you use different offensive di distributions um or even defensive in this case because there's a lot here then give it a shot all right play with it yourself get to know it and if you're an Arch Linux user and really like Arch, go ahead. Again, if you have ideas, if you have different opinions, if you have your own comments, please put them down below. All right, let me know. Because this is just my opinion of someone who hasn't really used it a whole lot, but enough to know that there's just way too much in here that I'll never use. And it was the same way with Kali and Paratech, but at least I could understand the, the basics of the tools that were there. I knew what they did. I I don't know, um, I, I really don't know what some of these are. I've never heard of a good portion of these. So if you have ideas, if you have some things on Black Arch that you want me to give a shot or that you want me to take a look at, by all means, let me know. All right, again, put it in the comments down below. Um, but other than that, this here is one man's opinion on Black Arch Linux. Um, again, I'm not saying you're not going to love it i'm just showing you kind of how it works or at least you know what it is and you're free to make up your own mind so 
with that, my name is Cyber Warrior, and as always, this is Cyber Warrior Studios. If you would love to support me, you can do that down below. Please hit that subscribe and that like button. Go ahead, hit the bell so you're notified anytime I put up a new video or go live, which I do on Friday nights for Security Happy Hour and at various other times for Security Happy Hour if I'm trying to, you know, make things work. So, uh, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week and I will catch you all next time. Thank you.